know sometimes you sympathize, you're willing to help, and you have love and compassion. But sometimes the same people when you try to help, and them same ones turn around and try to hurt you. See, so when you help, know who you are help when you help who you help. So for true, true, true. On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just representing right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a go on. A blessed and wonderful Saturday morning to each and every person out there tuning in to On The Spot News Media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories to share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So please, like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going on. In a Jamaica. So watch this now, my peeps. In the morning, yeah, to the near my Saturday, the day when some of the ones and ones them traverse the church. So happy Sabbath to the ones and ones them doing so. Now, please remember on the Spot News Media's loyal viewers and subscribers in your immediate prayers. You definitely see how Jamaica run right you now. So you know for sure. So we need that no more than ever. And to all of the ones and ones them traverse in the streets, going to the market district or just, you don't know. Looking about your regular business in the streets, just go and know, say, see if travel, pan the gravel, continue to look out on the corner, yeah, because what? the old dirty corner boy, them always out there. Alerts, <laughs> yeah, man. So, now the morning, yeah, we're going to start off with some updates, yeah, man, as promised. Now, on your screen is a man who has since been identified as Brian Blackwood age 51 years old but affectionately known as bigger in his community now today marks the sixth day that he was brutally taken out by criminal elements in a section of glengoff known as mount concord now this man was ambushed and attacked at his gate and his head dismembered yeah man the man them deal with the situation a certain type of way but the saint catherine north police is basically saying that they're at a standstill with their investigations because no one is coming forward with any form of evidence any form of information that can lead to an arrest the senior superintendent in charge of the St. Catherine North Police Division, that is Howard Chambers, stated, and I quote, We are still piecing the puzzle and searching for suspects as it relates to this offence. He stated that he is asking community members to support the police in solving this one as soon as possible. The superintendent continued to say that we have a number of theories but are not clear as to the motive right now. So the community members over there in Glengough, in Mount Concord, Glengough, the Spanish Town Police is depending on you to help them to solve this brutal and wicked attack on one of your own. Somebody have to know something. It is said that he had an altercation with a male from his community the night before he lost his life. So persons are theorizing that it is coming from that. But my peeps, if you take off a man's head, a serious business that. Yeah man, a man definitely a try to send a serious statement where that is concerned. If you knock it and clap it for a man, you know, it's one thing, you know. But if you spend the time for take off him head, is a total different thing that, right? So, so people, 
help out the Spanish Town Police to solve this one. <laughs> yeah, man. Now on Thursday, over there in the St. Andrews South Police Division, this man presently on your screen, who has since been identified as Courtney Clark, was slain along Washington Boulevard whilst he plies his taxi along that route. Now it is said that sometime before noon on Thursday, Clark was sitting in his white Toyota Pro Box motor car on Washington Boulevard close to the Boulevard Shopping Center when gunmen canned him up and made good their escape on foot in the area. So here you have a small gathering of other taxi operators having a peaceful protest demanding that the gunmen and thieves stop targeting them whilst they look and definitely go out there to seek their honest bread. Now, unconfirmed reports reaching on the spot news media is that the robbery was staged and is not the reason for the knockings and clappings, but they committed the robbery to shift the focus from the real issue at hand. It is said that he was involved in an altercation in the era of Seaview Gardens where he's from, where it is said that he was dating a young girl and relative, male relatives of that young girl would have approached him violently and asked him to seize and desist from seeing that particular female. It is said that their demands was not met or adhered to by him and threats was made upon his life. So persons are also theorizing that it may be coming from that. Because in this day and age, you know, my peeps, in Jamaica, it is really sad that no matter what it is, a person's life can be taken from them from the largest of things to the smallest of such. Yeah, man, really sad, but true. But a human being's life in Jamaica has slowly narrowed down to a pile of nothingness. So another dispute took place on that same Thursday morning, sometime after 8 a.m., but over there in the parish of St. Mary, Highgate St. Mary to be exact, where this man presently on your screen identified as Gary Graham, a laborer of Highgate St. Mary, was brutally pulled in the neck, yeah man, by another man who he had a previous dispute with. It is said that the night before, that is the Wednesday night, they had a physical confrontation where the Highgate police had to be called to that scene. It is said that the police managed to quell that situation. But however, investigations says that shortly before 8 a.m. Thursday morning, the two were involved in a physical fight again. This time in the middle of the town, right beside the taxi stand, when the suspect allegedly pulled a knife and shoved it in the neck of Graham. Graham reportedly fell, collapsed, face down, and remained motionless. He was pronounced, you know what, same place on the spot. But the police managed to capture the attacker and the attacker is presently in the custody of the Highgate police pending further investigations and of course he will be charged for the brutal slaying of Graham. Graham by the way is affectionately called Patakat in the area. So that is it my peeps for the updates. Now make we move into the main story. So by now, as you can see, we are traversed through the streets of Dyke Road, Yemen, Portmore, for sure. We have seen a number of flare-ups all over Portmore in recent times. 
and in February of this year, the latter part of February, a knockings and clappings took place over there in the Helsha Park community in Portmore, St. Catherine, where a 12-year-old boy and his 64-year-old grandmother get seriously caught up whilst they were inside their bedroom early one Saturday morning. I went down with her early, you know, we had to talk about in you know, the 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock bells in you know, the morning there. Yeah, man. So one uh, may be wondering where that really has stem from and why I know and the spot news media I bring that to the forefront. Well, I did speak briefly about it back then. Now I'm going to bring you some rather interesting facts right now. Because presently, in the Elsha Park community, there is a series of gang flare-ups in recent months that has caused the life of many of its residents. The warring factions presently in the Elsha Park community. One faction is known as the Rasta City Gang. And the other faction is known as the Wedderburn Gang. Wedderburn, by the way, is the last name of some of those gang members. Now, these two warring factions were indeed friends before they became enemies. And as always, my peeps, that is how it always start out, where friends become enemies. As the late great Robert Nesta Marley would have said, you know, only your friends know your secrets, so only he can reveal it. So more time when I see them gang warrior kick off and so much people are lose them three pints left, right and centre, is because both divides already know the ins and outs and runnings of the other side because they were all one at some point in time. So it is easy to traverse into that now become enemy territory and make damages thereof. So now my peeps, as I stated on Saturday the 25th of February 2023, a 64-year-old grandmother and her 12-year-old grandson was laying in bed in their house and them get can up. They were rushed to the Spanish Town Hospital where they were admitted in serious and critical conditions. Now people are wonder why them got can up granny and her grandson. Why? Now this man presently on your screen is the reason for that brutal attack on the grandmother and her grandson. This criminal element here is known as Kemar. Thomas, this man is not originally from the Helsha Park community, but hails out of the Garden Town community in rural St. Andrew, but is popularly known in the streets of Augustown as a ruthless knackis and clappis, but because of the extent of damages committed in the Augustown community, he ran away from Augustown and sought refuge in the Helsha Park community and he was living at the home of the woman and her 12-year-old grandson who get can up. So this man went on a knockings and clappings rampage and took the life of this man presently on your screen a man who is affectionately known as Zoom in the Elsha Park community. Now upon him taking the life of Zoom the Friday, sometime about 11 on Friday. The relatives, friends, associates of Zoom would have carried out the reprisal knockings and clappings because they would have already known beforehand that he stays in the house with the grandma and the grandson. So that is how those two end up get caught up in the bangarang we are going over there in the Elsha Park community. Really sad story, but that is the reality of Jamaica right now. 
you have to be careful of the distant relatives that you take into your home because that person just may lead to your detriment, especially if you know that that person is a nakis and clappis. Not because he's not from the area in which you reside, you take him in. You need to understand that wherever them criminal elements you go, death and destruction follows. Yeah, man. So anyway, my peeps, there will definitely be a follow-up and a continuation of this one. So anyway, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.